Lord, we thank you because you are so good. You are so merciful and kind in our lives. We thank you for the life that you have given us. We thank you for your grace that has sustained us. We thank you, Lord, for the breath that has not ceased in us. We thank you for health. We thank you for our life that is growing in you. We thank you for provisions and the shelter. We thank you for everything that you have done. We thank you for what you are doing now. We thank you for what you have in plan to do for us. That which eyes has not seen. That which has not been recorded that you have in plan for we, your children. Lord, we thank you because it is not by our power that we can be called sons and daughters of God. But it's by the privileged and the precious blood that the Lord Jesus shed on the cross of Calvary for the remission of our sins. So Lord, we thank you for forgiveness of our sins. We thank you for purifications. We thank you, Jesus, for your holiness. We thank you for what you have in plan for our body, our soul, and our spirit. We thank you for how far you have taken us and where you are taking us thus far, Lord, we can say Ebenezer. Thank you, King of Kings. In Jesus' precious and mighty name we pray. Amen. Before you are seated, can you shake someone and say, congratulations, it's your season. It's your season of grace. It's your season of blessing. Congratulations. And please be seated. God bless you. Glory be to God. He's worthy to be praised. I, I have a testimony. When I was age 21, the Lord showed me a vision. I was very young than I am now. And I do not understand it. Many visions. And one of them was that I saw myself in Canada. You know, I came to the land of Canada at age of 30 something. But I saw it far, far that time. I was in my parents' house and there's a room for the boys. And I just couldn't know how my spirit was restless. I was moved by myself. Nobody moved me away from the mattress. And I went on the floor with a mat. Again, I stood up. I went back until I fell asleep. And the Lord showed me this land. And he showed me a visa. In those days, you cannot even know the description of visas because I'm talking about in the early 2000s. 2000, yeah? And then I woke up. I didn't know I was awake to the body. And I drew what I saw as Canadian visa. And at some point, I, I, I saw that the expiry date was endless. I was wondering, what does this mean? When I woke up, I saw that I've already drew something in a book. And meanwhile, before I was restless and I went into that vision, I didn't even know that pen and paper was by my side. But you know what I'm trying to say is that it was unconscious, not from my consciousness. To call the story short, I was asking God, how can that happen? I came from a family where there is no opportunity for such. But I kept the hope alive. As I was growing, that thing was like a picture in my mind. To the extent that even when I got to the land where we came from to this place, again the vision continued. This time around, I saw my brother, our firstborn, we were talking, discussing about family issues. Don't forget, we are still in the season of body, soul, and spirit. And that's why I'm talking about this testimony. And I told him, I said, brother, I saw us, we're doing meeting. Again, that one left. At some point, again, I saw another revelation where we attended our daughter's graduation in Canada. Again, I told I said, I saw us in Canada, very cold place filled with snow then it's like you called me your car needed to be started 
but I do not understand what it means. Then it flows to where your child was graduating. I told him again. And that was it. Lo and behold, I'd forgotten. Two years ago or three years ago now, when the daughter was graduating, the daughter was the one that reminded us. And said, Daddy, you told me a dream that uncle had. And I said, Jesus. You know, it is beneficiary to serve God with all that made us. Our body, our soul, and our spirit. And that is how tomorrow can be prepared for us. And we can be aware of what God wants us to know. Now, this testimony is this. When she reminded us, again, one middle of night, around after three, my brother called me. Uh, he's working with this, uh, what's this telecommunication call here? I forgot now. Oh, is it good? Rogers. And with the Rogers, you know, big truck, the winter was around minus 42. So he forgot to turn the car on. And then in the middle of the road, you know, something happened and the car stopped. So he called me around after three. And then I had to get my, you know, my starter and all of that. And as I was driving on the road, my head was big because it was part of what I saw in the vision of many years ago as his car was what? Was on the roadside. And it happened exactly like that. Let me tell you something this morning. Though we are ordinary because we come from the dust of the hearth, but what is inside of us is extraordinary. We are not just a normal people. We are ordinary, but the extraordinary lives in the inside of us. And until we begin to know and come to that realization, frustrations that the world experienced that pressed them down, it's possible it pressed us down also. The Bible says we will go through many troubles, but we should be of good share because God has what overcome for us. But that we be if our spirit is in connection and not in contention with God. Do we get that? If our spirit is in connection, not in contention with God. The Bible says that the Spirit of God searches all things. So why is the Spirit of God searching? Why should there be a need for that Spirit to continue to search? The Bible says in the beginning, Genesis chapter 1, when God created heaven and earth, that the Spirit of God was moving. He didn't say it has moved. He says it was moving. So it was a continuous action there. That spirit continued to move until that the agenda of heaven was perfected when the creation of man came. And the Bible says even after that, God still what? Ensure that the spirit is still moving when he breathed upon just a dust that became a living soul. And even when we become a living soul in the struggle of life, in the struggle of being transformed from where we used to be to where God wants us to be, he told the disciples, he says, go and wait until you are endowed with the Holy Spirit. Where are we going this morning? I want you to tell yourself and say, God, I'm available if you can train my spirit. Say it with confidence. Lord, I'm available if you can train my spirit. Let me share another testimony with you before we go into Bible. <laughs> you know, last week, I was in the midst of about, last two weeks now, about eight ministers and the premier. And I remember one dream I told my wife right from Cyprus where we were that I don't know what I was doing in the midst of these people, but this is what I saw, connecting to this, connecting to that and that. And I said, okay. 
how can that happen? Because ordinarily, I'm a kind of person who doesn't push things. My coming to Canada was not pushed. Somebody just called and said, where is that your young brother I used to know? That was uh, very, you know, I love sport at the time. I was a goalkeeper. And they said, oh, there's a football match in Canada. Maybe you can come through that. So they tried to process that. We couldn't meet up with passport. And that left. And I didn't say anything about it. I was already an assistant professor, I guess, or I, I think assistant professor before I became an associate. The man again called and said, what are you doing where you are? Is it not time yet? And that time I picked it. All that the Lord showed. And what is showing at the time. I then say, okay, this is the season. Now let me tell you something. You see, life comes with a shape that you cannot define. But there is the spirit of God. The Bible says that that spirit know all things even before we behold them. The spirit already know that there is someone that is going to be born of a virgin Mary. That is the shape. Of the spirit there the spirit know that this person when he is born it would not be an ordinary child that there would be the wise men who would have to trace the star that has never been seen before there is already the picture prophesied by Isaiah that he was going to have all the government upon his shoulder and that it would be called counselor mighty God everlasting prince of peace there was already a rigged future of jesus that he was going to die for the sins of mankind the life of jesus was already rigged and was said that he wouldn't just die but he will rise again do you know that there is nothing new that we are doing on this earth i don't know if you get what i'm saying we may have different faces. We may have different expression, emotions, and so on and so forth. But there is something about our life that is not the same. And that thing is what we need to figure in one thing that is the same to us. One thing that is common to us. One thing that is the only one and the one for the rest of our life. And that is who are we in God? Because that God is the one thing. And you cannot know this thing by the body and the soul. You can only know them and behold them and become them in the training of your spirit. And I believe we are going to understand what I mean. Let's open our Bible quickly. Quickly. God bless you. I want you to do a reading with me this morning. In the book of Romans, quickly chapter 8 Romans chapter 8 and I take my reading from verses 3 therefore not being under law the requirement of the flesh is death it die but the requirement of the spirit is that if we give ourselves to it we become alive. That is what portion is saying in my description there. But what does it mean to you? Because there is a place of the body, there is a place of the flesh, which is connected to the soul, and there is a place of the spirit. Now when I say body, I mean that which constitutes, that carries, that has your soul where your spirit is attached to. So when I say flesh, I mean what makes your body to wrestle against the will of God concerning your life. Now, people of God, listen carefully. There is nothing we can become that we want to become that is new. That is what I'm trying to let us know here nothing is new 
above all that we are on earth is new to us. We continue to be new because we cannot see all of the future. We can't see all of the future. We cannot even see the little of the future except God permit us to see. So then, it is not just training your spirit, but also relying on the greater, the one who is a chief mover in the spirit. And that's the person of the Holy Spirit. And we are going to get to that over the time before we are done with that series in this month. Listen carefully. Your life has been rigged. Do you understand that? God knows the two seconds ahead of you. God knows the five minutes ahead of you. It may be new to us because we have that body and soul with us. So we need to connect in the spirit like we've been discussing in this series to know the mind of God. The Bible says that the mind of God, no one knows it except those who would search for it. So we have to search for the mind of God to know the mind of God. So when I say our future has been rigged, God already knows the entirety of our lives because he knows the ending from the beginning. That's why he's Alpha and Omega. So what is then that is important for us to know when we care for our body and our soul, we need to care for the spirit as well. Because caring for the spirit is like a responsibility that God has given to everyone. And as you begin to grow in your life and walk with God, you need to grow also in the responsibility of taking charge of your spirit. And we said in the past weeks that through prayer, through reading of the word of God, you take charge of your spirit. But the chief of it is knowing the Holy Spirit. And that will take us three weeks to take from next week. You need to know the person of the Holy Spirit who will lead you. So now that revelation I saw, I told my wife, probably even my children at the time, but they were still more younger. You know, we were having a debate before the premier become a premier. And after the debate, I shook hand with him and I told him, you are going to come in. Honestly, I don't have that boldness. When I don't receive it, I would never have done. And he looked at me, he nodded, he said. And when we saw two weeks ago, he pointed at me, he remembered. Even though there was no time to discuss at that, he remembered that word that God said, because that has been rigged in his life. Now listen, he was the first indigenous person that would become a premier in the history and the beginning of Canada. It has never happened before. I think I've shared that with us. So when we saw, we kind of are like a testament to the rigging power of God. So then, if God has rigged our future, why should we go to any other spirit or sastra? Help me to see. How far can they see themselves? In the book of Acts chapter 13, you see what the Bible says about Simon. About Simon, he was a man that was a sastra. And this sastra could not pay him. He needed to rely more on what is greater. And if he will not do what will happen is that his life would do what? Turn to nothing or destroy. So when we are asking for ideas, what is God saying? What do you think my career should look like? What do you think I need to become? We are asking people, it's good, it's not bad. But I think the first person to ask is God. Who am my God? What are you making of me? Because it's the one that knows you. So when you are asking God that you are turning into the spirit and saying, God, I cannot see you in that physical and that emotional level which is my soul based. But I want to probe further. I want to know further.
in Cyprus, I met with a wife of president, and I didn't know she was a wife of president. There was a cause they call Alpha, Alpha cause from the United Kingdom. So some group of men, evangelists came from United Kingdom, and they call us as, a, as one of the leader to attend that Alpha cause. As we're rounding up the Alpha cause, because you have to watch those who are broadcasting from United Kingdom or already recorded programs. I heard the voice of God and said, stand up and go to a particular supermarket, a name it was called. And I told them that I had to go now. And nobody even said, oh, hope everything is fine. They just waved me and I moved straight to the place God led me. And immediately I got to the place. In those days, I only have something like a one dollar we equate it to what we have here, or two or thirty cents, not even up to one dollar in my pocket. And I moved to that supermarket. I was a bit disappointed that God, why do you bring me here? I'm painting a picture to you. Because if we are living our life every day, we go out, we come back, and there is no similitude that. We have the voice of God through the scripture or even direct voice of God, then we need to check ourselves. And that is why many people are in trouble in this next generation. They rely so much on pastors. In this ministry, we build you to know God yourself. That doesn't mean that God cannot speak through your pastors. God speaks. In fact, church cannot be bastardize until Jesus comes. People will say whatever they have to say and there are some truth there but the church will remain until Jesus comes. Nobody can take church away. You see COVID happened, they, it couldn't take it away. Tell me another thing that may be coming. It can't because church is spiritual. <laughs> church is spiritual. So when I got there, I was moving around, a bit disappointed. So I just approached the drinking area just to get something that that money can buy. And I heard the voice of God says, look back towards the entrance. And immediately I looked back, I saw a woman, the Lord said, go pray for her. And I was like, yes, I move. Because a thing of a spirit is like a compulsion. Something will compel you. And that is why we have to talk about that relationship with the Holy Spirit in order for you to bring your body to life and your soul into the balance that it will be able to, you know, to help between the war against the spirit and the flesh. Because your soul level is the intermediary. And you need to bring it to balance by the help of God. And I approach her and I say, please, can I pray for you? And she looked at me and smiled. And she opened her hands where she just did an operation. She said, yes, I really do need prayer because I'm feeling pain. And I prayed for her. While I was rounding up the prayer, I just realized that there were two huge people around of her and um, other huge people in another section of the perimeter, you know. I didn't know that they were bodyguards. She then asked after the prayer that, I mean, she said something. She said she felt a strain. That it looks like she's healed. I said, you are healed? And I was about going. She said, do you know me? I said, no. Don't you watch TV? And in those days, I don't watch TV, honestly. By the time I come back, either I sleep or my wife has, do, has been the one that introduced me to watching TV. Because I love to sit and hear. The Bible says in the book of Habakkuk chapter 2, it says, I stand upon the watch and I walk. And I wait to hear what God will say and what I will what respond back. And he says, pick up the pen and the paper. Write the vision, even though it may tarry. Now God is saying there that vision is not automatic like a magic. Vision is something that when you receive it, there will be a gap of action. You need to fill in those actions in order for that vision to speak. And by the time I spoke with the woman, I mean, she spoke with me afterward. She said she's the wife of president. She said, my husband is sick. And she gave her number. And, you know, she said something. Do you have problem with police? I said, yes. 
She said, from today, no more problem. If you do have, make sure you call my manager. And that time, we usually have problem with police because it was strange to them. Since the time of Barnabas, I believe that the only church they've seen is like an orthodox, you know, where people just gather, they don't pray. So police will come in the front of us like this. They will be seated looking at me like this. But after when I, yeah, because in fact, sometimes they will call me to report the following day and tell them, what do I mean by fire? What do I, there was a time that I was to be deported. There was a time I was put in, 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 a, in a detention for a day and a half. There was a time I was, an handcuff was in my hand. So for those of you who have seen my, you know, that part of the thing that is called opposed to, it's not something I want to, it's the Spirit of God that called us into that mission because it called us to nations. So when that woman told me, I think some weeks later, these people came again. And when they came, my boldness was risen. And I told them, I said, fire will come physically now. And they will not be able to come and check us. And I tell you, that was the last they ever came. The rest become history. They started to understand what God is doing in our midst. And I told you one of the revelations God showed me about the flood that will happen in the land. And it happened. And they were all asking, how did God reveal this? First Thessalonians chapter 5. Verse 23. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. Now may God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, body, soul be kept blameless by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So body, soul, spirit have been divine to be most essential part of our life that we cannot do with without see what makes you there is no man that is born bold <laughs> but what makes you bold if you want to have boldness listen to this people of God children of God if you want to develop boldness of God you must learn to hear the voice of God the voice of God is in the boldness of God John the Baptist said, prepare the ways of the Lord. That was the voice of God that he had. And he was bold to tell that generation and say, you are a generation of vipers. It was a boldness because he saw it first in the spirit. When you build something in the spirit, you have no fear to declare it physically. In fact, sometimes you don't even know. Your mouth is taking over by the move of the spirit and God speaks it out and when it's finished coming out you then begin to wonder what did I say I remember when myself and my wife is cutting for those of you who are single you need to learn this we will pray together we pray together to an extent that one day we were praying the Lord revealed to me that our first child is a daughter as we begin to pray I say second child is a daughter and as we begin to pray, I say, I, saw, I mean, second child is a son. And as we begin to pray, son again. And my wife, may, maybe sometimes we joke about it that maybe if I have seen more, <laughs> we'll have uh, five, five children or more. But let me tell you, God reveals. He says, it is the glory of God to cover a matter. Why does God cover it? He wants to show to us that I have your future in my hands. I have your future in my hands. I have it. And he wants to show that always, not once. And beyond that, many things God shows us, even when we were single, they are all the things that is still trailing our life till today. Is it true, woman of God? Many things. So this is the time for you to start training your spirit in Christ Jesus, not in sorcerers, not in the power of this world, not in checking your star on the internet. They are all fake. They will not work for you. 
they will bring confusion and depression. But there is one power that is in Christ Jesus that is able to help you and show you not just your future, but the pattern and the steps that you need to take in reaching that future. And let me tell you, one day I was in the room, I guess, and email comes in, and some people says, oh, we've seen you on this, 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 we want to introduce this to you, apply for it, maybe you can be on the board of trustees. And that is how I come to this thing I shared about two weeks ago. I didn't apply for it, or looking for it, I meant. Somebody looked. Because the spirit, what it does is this. When God speaks something out in the spirit, the spirit is never sitting. The spirit always will be looking for opportunity to connect that thing that has been spoken until it becomes it. The Bible says twice has it spoken. I mean once has it spoken and twice I heard. That means that the spirit of God goes around to show conviction to us that Jesus has spoken. God has spoken. What he says he will bring to pass. So if the Spirit of God is always in the move, then what is our problem as a human? Our problem is that we are not listening. We are very busy. I respect people that will take time before they talk because I understand that there is something in the inside of them. Of course, there are times God will give you permission to talk as much as maybe it's a season. But there is also a time of listening where your emotion will be under the control of the spiritual power of God. The book of Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Now let me quickly tell you before we close. The war between the body and the spirit is here. Galatians chapter 5 verse 16 to 18. The Bible says, but I say walk by the spirit and do not gratify the desires of the flesh for the desire of the flesh are against the spirit and the desire of the spirit are against the flesh listen to that carefully he said for these are opposed to each other they are opposing each other to prevent you from doing what you would. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under law. Now, the Bible is not saying that we are not under the law of the Word of God. It says that we are not under the law of our emotion. We are not under the law of what the Word has painted to us to be real or to be right. But we are under the guidance, the lordship, and the directive of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father. Lord, I pray every single one seated here that they may know that you are Jehovah. You are God, the Christ. Father, let the eyes of your children be open in the name of Jesus Christ. So what is walking by the Spirit? What does it mean? Listen carefully. Look at verse 18 of that verse. He says that if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. So if Paul has said that, it means that it is true. It is true. So the emphasis of Paul was that we are led by his power. So the power of God moves us. In You see, there are some output stuff we see that moves if you see a turbine blade it moves in certain direction but the truth is that it moves in the direction of the wind i declare in the name of jesus christ of nazareth everything from today we begin to move in great direction for you in the wind direction of blessedness in the wind of glorious blessedness in the wind of positivity in the wind of anointing, in the wind of revelation, in the wind of your tomorrow secrets. Receive them in the name of Jesus Christ. So why is it crucial to walk by the Spirit? Why should we walk by the Spirit? There are two things. It's in the verse 18, 16 and 18 of that Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 and 18. 
that is the reason why it is crucial. He says, but I say, walk by the Spirit. So that means that God is saying, I repeat, emphatically, I'm reinstating, I'm making it clear that you need to walk by the Spirit. If you are walked by the Spirit, it means you are led by the Spirit. It says, and you will not carry. So that means that every human being is bound, is born, is under the guardianship of the flesh. But we need to train ourselves to receive the guardianship of the Holy Spirit so that the flesh will not be gratified, but the flesh will be subdued to the leading of the Holy Spirit. That is what we need. Last Sunday, I was so excited. I couldn't even preach. I was excited because that day was a celebration of what God is doing. That day was a celebration of my marriage. Our marriage anniversary was also a celebration of my baby's birthday, same Sunday. And I was so joyous beyond the soul level. My spirit caught it and I couldn't even preach. That is what it is in the spirit. The reason why church may miss out today is that every normal church wants to come and arrange time. This is the time for preaching and sermon. This is the time for song. But will there not be a day that God will baptize the church that there will be no chance to preach? But there will be no chance to, you know, it will just be the move and the leading of the Holy Spirit. Because God is dynamic. And I decree that in the land of Manitoba and entire Canada, God is raising the voice of armies. God is turning religion to personal relationship. God is opening doors of personal revival in the life of people and the collective revival. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Finally, why must you develop your spirit? Let's stand to our feet and close by that. Why must you and I develop our spirit, people of God? Look at the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 7 to 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 7 to 10. The Bible says, but we speak the wisdom of God in mystery. Listen, there is no one that can get the hidden wisdom of God without being spoken from the spirit and if it is spoken from the spirit it means it's led by the spirit and if it is led by the spirit it means you are possessed by the spirit i declare in the name of jesus christ you will not be possessed by the spirit of this world but by the spirit of god almighty receiving the name of jesus christ it was that spirit that possessed meshach abednego and shadrach the king told them, you need to bow for my God. And they said to the king, even if the God we serve would not deliver us, we are not going to bow. That is beyond soul level. Tell me, is it true? Because nobody wants to die sheep. I, I'm, I'm not going to find it easy to go into the mouth of death. Nobody, no human being is built as such. But they waited because their spirit was engaged. And it was the same case in the life of Barnabas, Silas, and, uh, and Paul. In the book of Acts chapter 16, the Bible talks about how they were led, you know, into the prison. But while they were in the prison, even though that situation was challenging, even though there was no money, they could not pay the month rent. They could not pay for their tuition fee. They have no idea of how to get their papers. They have no idea of the access way out of that prison. They have no idea how long they will persist in their situation. But there is something that their spirit does. The spirit prays. The Bible says why they were praising God. What happened? The prison gate opened. That is spirit level. So the reason why people persist and that that persistency may not stop is because the more you see things in the rear view of the physicality that why is not happening, I must take this shape. This is what people say. 
you, you know, frustration of, of, upon frustration will be loading up. But the moment you begin to say, God, what are you really saying? Solution begins to come. I want you to pray this prayer and say, Father, help me to begin to see from the nuances of the Spirit as to what are you saying for my life, for my family, for my destiny. Begin to pray and say, God, show them to me. Show them to me what you are saying. I want to know what you are saying for my tomorrow. I want to know what you are saying for my future. I want to know what you want for me. I want to know how you want to lead me. I want to know in the name of Jesus. I need to know. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious and mighty name we pray. Amen. Throughout my time in, you know, like in nine years, working in a particular university as a professor, each time I go to offices, my superior will ask me to pray for them. You know why? One afternoon, I was just sleeping, JJ. I wasn't even praying. I was just waiting, just resting. And the Lord opened my eyes. And I saw a fire in a portion of a place in the university. Mm. So I knew that it's the spirit that brought the wave of that revelation. It's not me because I was not thinking of any fire. You will see by the next three weeks, you will understand how the spirit works. You don't have to think it for. It doesn't allow you to think for itself is a personality that wants to erode your life and direct it you can't direct the spirit of god he wants to direct you so when you are not prepared you just show up and what you need to do is to say yes lord yes lord yes lord don't worry it's a reaction ah you don't understand man of god <laughs> it's a reaction that person is just knocking to distract is a reaction when the move of spirit is going you know here that we are gathered they said it, it has not been possible for five people to gather i said man i will come it has to be broken of course we are going to be looking for something that is more accommodating because we need to start to prepare and you you will be part of those who god will use mm -hmm. we need to be prepared god usually shake foundation of things before it decorates mm -hmm. it, the foundation had to shake you had to readjust one or two things it's, 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 it's God's mercy. You know, the Bible made us to know that God is God over all. <laughs> and if it is God over all, that means that there is nothing in life that should be serious to us than we knowing God and working with God. So I want us to pray one more prayer point and we are done. We are going to declare the Lord, whatever that is eating deep in my destiny and finding some kind of little relief. Yes, you know, so, devil is so crafty. They, they hit deep in the life of people. Maybe true, they are sleeping. When they are sleeping, maybe true certain things or health. It begins to hit. And then again, it will make them feel well. They will say, okay, maybe it's just the biological stuff. They will not really know that there is a foundational issue somewhere. You are going to declare that God will expose every spiritual deadness that is not of God, that is wrestling with your destiny. That God will expose them and give you victory. Pray, pray, pray. That God will expose them and give you victory. In the mighty name of Jesus. God will expose them and give you victory. In the mighty name of Jesus. God will expose them and give you victory. Receive it. We receive victory. Receive victory. In Jesus' and precious and mighty name, name we pray. Jesus. Amen. So when I saw that revelation, I told a brother who is also working with the university now. He's also a lecturer now. I said, write a letter and explain what I saw and the area I saw in. Lo and behold, the following week, fire gob the admission, the rectorate building, exactly where God revealed. But thank God, it was just a portion that was born because God has spoken. So they read that letter, but they didn't do anything with it. And they, they called me back. And two people asked me to pray for them. <laughs> Father Lord, I declare in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that every life that is here at the sound of God's voice, listen carefully, extraordinary landed in your life. 
the power of extraordinary so that in your job place, when you appear in that job place, grace will appear. Receive in the name of Jesus. When you appear in that job place, when somebody wants to look down on you, they will look up to your God. Receive it in the name of Jesus. From today, you are no longer under the law of the flesh. You are no longer under the law of that power that controls your spirit. But you are under the tutelage and the direction of the Holy Spirit. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Father Lord, we thank you. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' precious and mighty name we pray. Let's love for Jesus. Let's love for Jesus.